So welcome back to another episode and welcome back to another Rob. Hello. And today we want to talk about Mega Man from the past till now, the ups and downs and my god, there's been so many ups and downs. It's been a roller coaster ride. Yeah. But it started off so amazingly in the 80s and uh Oh, yeah. What was Mega Man like in the 80s for you? And Well, I mean, in the beginning, it was, I mean, a very humble beginnings. Capcom wanted an arcade-feeling game for at home. They wanted something that would feel like you were at the arcade, lots of action, fun to play, but they wanted something special and yes. different. So they came up with this character, Mega Man. And now uh, the blue palette came from the fact that the largest number of shades they had was for the color blue. So that's why his outfit ended up being the two shades of blue. Um, but they, they wanted to make something very, very much in keeping with the gaming you could get. Throwing your quarters down machines. And so they built a side-scrolling pla action platformer. So they made it so you could choose what order you finish the levels in. Yeah. And take the weapon from that boss and move on to the next. This is all everyone who knows Mega Man knows this is very basic stuff. But it, at the time, revolutionary. No one had ever seen anything like it. Yeah, like well, you could use uh, get a, a power up from a one boss and use it on another. And well, yeah, find, they, you know, you know the weapons or whatever, and find out their weaknesses on other bosses. Well, that was the that, that was, was the fascinating. Secret. That was the key to it. Was this rock paper scissors kind of a? So this guy is good against this guy, and you had to figure out. So not only did you need to learn the levels, memorize oh, God, how memorize. to get through them, and they were friggin' hard, uh, especially in the first one. But you also wanted to then hope you knew what boss weapon to use against the next guy in the line. For the very beginning, it was a lot of trial and error. I mean, now there's wikis and <laughs> online speed runs speed and speed runners and uh, all the rest of that shit. Yeah. But at the time, totally new idea. Did you start with Mega Man One, or yes. did you? So you went in order. You discovered them in order. I did. I did actually. And what happened was um, the original Mega Man. I've told this story a few times. So if it bores you, fast forward for the next five minutes, and you'll <laughs> catch us on the other end of it. Uh, but. My parents rented me a couple of games one weekend back in the 80s, back when renting games was a thing, um, from Classic Video. I remember it very well. We lived very yeah. close to each other, so yeah. this is just up so, the road. Um, and I would always, when I was in there, what they had is they had all the boxes thumbtacked to the wall. Remember up overhead? By, behind yes. the counter, there was yeah. all the boxes, and then there was a black and white photocopy that was taped to a piece of cardboard on a peg. So if you rented it, you took the, the cardboard with the photocopy, you handed it to them, they gave you a Ziploc bag with the cartridge and a photocopy of the manual in it. Because wow. even back then, people were stealing manuals. Yeah. You best. Isn't that funny, the, the photocopied manuals? I forgot about but that. But that was, and that was, yeah. I mean, and back then, most of us, the first thing we did was we'd read the manual, look at the pictures, and get to know what the thing was about. Because, you know, uh, yeah, there were only two buttons and a D pad. But again, remember, this was new. Video gaming in this style, instead of just a joystick with a button on top, this was still new to us. So, I always refused to rent Mega Man because of that infamous oh. cover art yes. with the badly drawn old man with the light, with the gun. So, I, I wouldn't... I know, a box I, art goes a long way. I would it not. It still does. And, and I never really looked at the back because I couldn't get past how stupid that looked. But my, my, I guess my dad and I went and rented Castlevania 2. I was all excited about it. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to play it. Simon's Quest. Woo! Uh, Great my game. My mom had gone on her own and picked Mega Man. And God, no, I don't know why. I never told her I wanted to play it. I never said a word about it. She just randomly went out and chose a game to rent for me and chose Mega Man. And so I get home and I've got Castlevania 2 and she's rented this Mega Man. thing. Oh, for the love of God. So I took the cartridge and I, you know, let's make her happy, play it for 10 minutes and then get on with it. And I put it in and I pushed power and I turned it off and I took it out and blew in it and put it back in as we all did. Hit power and the screen came up and that music kicked in. And now the the Mega Man logo's up. I hit start and you're taken to that start screen where they've got the, the at that time there were only six Robot Masters. Yeah. For this was the, the only classic series game with six Robot Masters. A little trivia. So, and, and and those designs look so different from that cover art. Yeah. Hey, had you even seen it in Nintendo Power at that point? No. no I didn't wow. see. I didn't have Nintendo Neither Power. Neither did I. I had to go over to like all, my friend all, Andrew. All the rich go. kids and and the like kids Andrew. who had Nintendo like Power. Andrew. Yeah. I got the Nintendo Power Flash newsletter every once in a while. Oh and yeah, the two pages. Two, yeah. Woo! Oh, <laughs> holy crap! But, hey, we were actually excited about it. Oh god. It. Let's be honest. When you got anything in the mail back then, you were like, yeah. 
worst day ever. I, I got something in the mail, and yeah. it's about Nintendo. Yeah. It's two pages, and I read it 8,000 times till it fell apart. I know, and uh, I say before the internet, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, God, way before the internet. So, so you so fell in love with this, and so you read it. I did, did fell you, in love did with you, it. Did you finish it in that sitting? No. Oh, oh no. fuck no, no not no. the first one. The first one is balls hard. And as a matter of fact, I didn't finish it until well after the, I think the third or the fourth one was out. I never actually fully finished the first one. Yeah. It was hard. But, so I discovered that one and, and my mind just exploded. I was like, this is like the greatest game ever. This is fantastic. I love this. I, I want to play more of it. Um, and it wasn't until later when I discovered Mega Man 2 at Scott 72 video. Yeah. There was, and back then again, pre-internet, you didn't know suddenly you walk into a rental store and there's a big box that says Mega Man 2 on it. And I just... The, the interesting thing about Mega Man 2 compared to all of the other Mega Man games, right. that game was so well distributed, everybody I knew had that game. Yep. Even I had a copy. Everybody I ended up acquiring a copy from somewhere, and I finished yep. that game. It's the only Mega Man game I've ever finished, and I liked it. And I found it very... It was easier than the it, rest of them. It was a bit easier. It was paced perfectly. I mean, it was challenging. It's still hard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But challenging. it was easier yeah. than the rest of them. But it was paced perfectly. The level design was excellent. The music... I mean, it is an iconic game for a reason. That soundtrack stands the test of time. My favorite soundtrack of any Mega Man game is Mega Man 2. My, my, yeah, and, and my favorite soundtrack of all time yeah. is Mega Man 2. Is it? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Is, and I mean, I mean, you, I mean, you've got bands like the Megas that started by making an album that was all basically rock songs, like a rock opera almost, about Mega Man 2. The Proto Man, it's all about Mega Man stuff. But Mega Man 2 soundtrack has spawned more remixes, more other inspirations for music than any other. So um, we, we gotta go ahead here is that, so, so you play you played this game and then you start playing all the rest of them. Yeah, I discovered Mega Man 2 when it came out for rent. Mega Man 3 was, I remember there were TV ads for it. Yeah. And that, that was unheard of at that time for there to be a TV ad for a video game. And I remember because it was a guy running around with an aluminum briefcase and he was supposed to be like from Capcom HQ and he got caught at the end. He was stealing it and the briefcase hit the ground and it popped open and it was a copy of Mega Man 3 inside. And I saw a TV ad for a Mega Man game. Like, and then it's a new Mega Man and my Ah! Mega Man was doing well because they kept making them. They they started making them like every year, every couple years. There was a new one and a new one. And now, as much as we love them here, unbeknownst to me at the time, Japan was insane. Yeah. They had Rock Band Summer Festivals. They had design contests where kids could design a robot master and send it in. And uh, some of them, one of them would be picked and would be put in the next game. Yeah. There was all this mania. Mega Man and he was... Capcom's pet character. He was the symbol of the company. Their way, mascot. Their yeah, he was the yeah. ultimate mascot. Yeah. So way before, because, I mean, Street Fighter shares an anniversary with Mega Man very closely for the creation of the series, but you got to remember that was the first Street Fighter, and it wasn't... Street, you're talking about Street Fighter 1987? Yes. Right, right, right. So not as big a deal at the time. So, I mean, Street Fighter didn't become mascot characters in such a big franchise until much later. Yeah. Mega Man was the franchise that, that, that was Capcom. Oh, yeah. And and they continued to do so. Now, Street Fighter became popular. Ghosts and Goblins, Ghouls and Ghosts. Oh, Strider. No, all, all the other but, Capcom. But, Capcom was on, was on fire back then. But Mega Man came out so regularly and so well known. They made little tweaks and little changes here and there. But the, when Mega Man X on the Super Nintendo hit, and that was, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that was before Mega Me Man 6 on the NES. Uh, I wouldn't know. This but, is why you're here. But Mega Man X came out, which was sticking with a similar formula, but enough different and changed in this new futuristic storyline, and it's a new Mega Man. I and even I went out and bought a used copy of Mega Man X. Yeah. And I, I do like that so game. So good. Yeah, it was. So good. It was really good. You know, and then there were the little capsules that had Dr. Light in them, and, and the story, and very much the original Mega Man classic series, the story was a very simple. Dr. Wily's trying to take over the world. you got to stop him. For the first four to five of the... No, for the first three, that... Four was when they really started bringing story in with Dr. Cossack. Yeah. And Dr. Cossack was supposedly a bad guy. Right. And then you found out that Wily was pulling the strings, blah, blah, blah. Spoiler alert! Yeah. If you, and seriously, if you don't know that by now, it's not a spoiler. I'm sorry. It's been how many years? But they started to bring story elements into Mega Man with, with four there. Mega Man X 
story driven from the start. Yeah. Really much more story driven with the Reploids, the finding of X by Dr. Kane in the remnants of Dr. Light's lab, him coming alive, uh, Dr. Kane studying him, creating other Reploids, then the Sigma virus, which then introduced Zero, which as the story came along, it, it just, it was such a deep, immersive, woven together story. So well done. So Mega Man took another step. Suddenly there was a story canon to worry about. And, but still, massively popular, yeah, very things, well loved and respected series. Things started getting a little more complicated with the story yes, at that point. Absolutely. Yeah, even I was like, I don't get it. And you were the only person in the neighborhood who did. <laughs> I was like, I don't understand this stuff. And so they, all of a sudden we went through four, five, six, seven, eight of the regular Mega Man stuff. And then we got into PlayStation yeah. 1. Well, play 7 was on the Super NES. Yes. So, after okay, Mega Man yeah. X, we got Mega Man 7, Classic Series Super NES. Uh, and then 8 was the one that came out, and X4 were the Sega Saturn PS1 ones. Yeah. And just, you know, the Mega Man 8 gets a lot of hate. It's most people's least favorite. I still love it. It just has some very, very funny voice oh acting. Oh my god, voice acting. That and is just the, insane. The Frostman level with the jump, jump, slide, slide, jump, oh. slide, slide, jump. Oh. Clown man, yeah. see you in my dreams. Just horrible. I, hey, I remember. So he, I remember you brought oh it over. God. He brought it over back in the day, and <laughs> me, me and Satan were over there at the time. Why are you like, doing this? And you put it, you put it in, and we're like, oh no. my god! Like Mega Man's got no. voice acting, and you've got, you've I got can't to wait. You've got to remember that, that, like, I was ceremonial about shit to a degree that most people were, thought I was weird. Like literally, I sat down, I laid out three cigarettes, yeah, we three cans of beer. Then. I had the system. I put the disc in. I closed it, and I was like. And I opened a beer, and I put it aside, and I lit a cigarette, and I took a drag, and I put it in the ashtray, and then I just took a moment to just center myself, and I hit power. And the opening song was this, like, 80s rockin', awesome song, and there's this hand-drawn animated intro, and all the different robot masters. They went through, like, from one through six or seven different robot masters and combat scenes with Mega Man, like, grabbing them by the foot and smashing them into walls, and this crazy cool stuff. You're like, oh my god, this is amazing! And I'm having my beer and I'm smoking my cigarette, and I'm just, oh my god. And then I hit start to start the story, and then there's Mega Man riding on Rush, and he's, like, in rush, bo in rush board mode, and he's flying along towards this building, and then Base comes in and he's hovering there looking all badass and Mega Man looks him in the eye and he says, Bass, why must I fight you? And I almost cried and these two started laughing so fucking hard. It was it was, it was, it was, it was heartbreaking for us too because we're like, what has happened? What has happened? And then the jump, jump, slide, slide thing and oh. we were just like, we were just laughing. And I remember that's where you coined the we coined the term. Uh, it's fluid like liquid water. Yes, because the animation opening scene. Because I had read in a game fan magazine that it had such fluid graphics. Yeah. When especially when you jumped in and out of the water, the liquid physics were great. But when I re sort of paraphrases them, I said, "Yeah, but the graphics are so smooth like liquid water." <laughs> it's become a bit of a classic thing for us now, like liquid because, water. Because I are smart. Yeah, the graphics are great, like liquid water. The graphics are smooth, so, like liquid so water. So then there's eight, and then so what happens at this point, and this is the point that I wanted to get to, Yeah. Mega Man, does it, it stops? No, so the classic series stopped at eight. Okay, the classic series is over. Now, yeah. the X series was still continuing. We had X5 and X6 on, on the PlayStation, but during that time, we also got this lovely little gem called Mega Man Legends. And now Mega Man Legends was uh. such a diversion because there were rumors of a 3D Mega Man. I mean, and we used to no, say it's interesting because you're just putting in the, the time period for me. I'm remembering that uh, PS1 like, era. I'm a huge fan of Mega Man yeah. Legends. I'm like, so that kind of stopped, and then Mega Man Legends kicked in. Was there any offshoot series though? Was there what about anything else to mention? Mm, no, because I don't believe the Game Boy Advance stuff started coming out until after the PlayStation One era stuff. And then we had the the X series was kind of doing its own thing on the it Super kinda, Nintendo. It, it so X One. X2 and X3 Super Nintendo North America. Yeah. X3 had a Saturn release in Japan. I don't think it had PS1, but I might be correct. Um, X4, Saturn, PS1. X5, X6, PS1, because yeah. by that point Saturn yeah. was yeah. no longer happening. But in and amongst that, Legends came out. And it was this completely Different. new, 
different, completely reimagined universe. A world covered with endless <laughs> water. <laughs> That's exactly it. That's how it opens when you put the disc in, and it's, it was the cheesiest sounding opening. But it was awesome. But it was. It worked. So, so Mega Man Volmut, he's a digger. They're these basically adventurers and explorers that travel through the ancient ruins of this incredible technology to try and find these crystals called Zenny, which are a form of currency and also a power source in this world. And he's got an operator or someone who watches his back over the radio and scans the area, who is Roll Casket. Mm -hmm. So we've got Rock and Roll, Mega Man, Volnut, and Roll Casket, and Roll Casket's grandfather, Gramps. Uh, and so you're introduced into this new world of open, free exploring adventure, and it, you know, the, the it introduced the Bo the Bone family or the Bonds as they were called in North America with Tron, Teasel, and Babu. Uh, the Serve Bots or Colbun, which are now really associated with the Mega Man franchise. Yeah, which they're is interesting. everywhere. Yeah, look like little Lego men. Um, but that was the start of that series. So Legends One was well received. I mean, it was ported to the N64. Yes. Uh, it was... Uh, and I it bought was... you that for Christmas one year, the yes. Japanese version, which is cool box art, so right? Cool. It's cool. You um, know, but for me, uh, I started playing it, and I wasn't I wasn't a Mega Man hardcore fanatic, but this, like, brought me in. I was like, oh my god, we got, like, these amazing 3D polygon, like, uh, characters in yeah. this, like, full-on 3D environment, RPG mechanics. Yep. I remember I told the story, waking up so hungover one day, and I had a copy of the game. I finished the game in one sitting. Yeah. I absolutely love that game. Was... I never played the second one, though. Interesting. Isn't the, that weird? The art style was so different and so refreshing and so new, and I loved it. I the loved character the, designs are the, amazing. The, the character designs and the enemy designs, those weird robotic yes. kind of polygonal with like the points for feet and like yeah. all, all of those characters. The design work was phenomenal. So brilliantly well done. Yeah. So good. And we ended up getting the misadventures of Tron Bon after that, which was kind of a, a side story, an offshoot. And then we got Legends 2. No, okay, a curious question. I've never, I, I don't know. Yeah. Is Legends 2 better than Legends 1? Ah, interesting. I, I remember thinking that the hype wasn't so big on number two. And I number never I never I never went into it. Didn't do as well, I don't think, in sales. It mm. wasn't uh, it wasn't as widely distributed. Um it, it it wasn't received as well in the mainstream. Right. Hardcore fans of Legends love them both. I am one of those, and I mean Legends 2 really opened up the story. So this one, the first one had a great story, but this one really opened it up and flushed out a greater universe and ended, spoiler alert, ended on a cliffhanger. Mega Man Volnut was stuck on a rocket that got shot to the moon. Oh, this is and the whole moon Tron thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and Roll were left because there's the, the romantic subplot where both of them have a crush on Mega Man, kind of, and Mega Man, you know, in the middle. And both of them are stuck thinking, well, we may have to work together to get him back. And that's, Fade the black. That's it. We're, we're. That's where the story ended on that cliffhanger. So that's where that whole group on like Facebook get is. me off get, the moon. Get me off the moon. Well, hundred thousand strong to get Mega Man Legends three back. Get me off the moon is there. So it's Facebook.com/slash Get me off the moon. It's really working. So. <laughs> well now and now this takes us to <laughs> this. Guess, fade. This exactly is where it. this comes in. So Mega Man Legends. Some of the most patient fans in the history of gaming. And. You can go ahead and call me wrong and call me names. I don't care. Patient is all hell because we waited for Legends 3. We waited and we waited. And then finally, it was more than 10 years later, they said, we're making Legends 3. And when the Nintendo 3DS launches, there will be a demo version that's called the Mega Man Legends 3 Prototype Edition that will be for sale as a, a sort of a pre-game. And then Legends 3 will be in development. And Keiji Nafune, who is hailed as... Sort of the, the the father of Mega Man, the guy who produced most of the series, was really involved in it from very early in the going, was sort of the driving force. He was the head of Capcom Research and Development. He was very high up in that company, but he's always been connected with Mega Man as the driving force of the series. Yeah. He was helming a Mega Man Universe game that was basically Mario Maker for Mega Man levels before I Mario Ma Maker. I, you know what? I forgot about Mega Man Universe. It was being executive produced by a Akiko Ito, but he was... Oh, uh, do you remember I got you the, the thing signed by yep. her? Isn't that crazy? Yep. And I still have it, and I still have the, the poster you got me of the Claymation video that they made for the ad when they announced it. Oh, yeah. And signed by her. But there was that in development, 
which was going to be fucking amazing because you were going to be able to unlock like Ryu from Street Fighter and Arthur from Ghosts and Goblins and all sorts of other characters to put into your levels and build your own Mega Man levels. That's it right. was going to be Mario that, Maker, but Mega Man. What, where was nine and ten at this point? They came afterwards, or was that in the? No, same? they came before. So, okay. so that, yeah, they did come before because we had Mega Man Nine was the first real like Mega Man's back. Yeah, because they did nothing with him for a long time. Yeah, a long time, um, and then Mega Man Nine. Was announced and it was 8 bit. It was back to classics. No slide, no charge buster, just straight up old school jump and shoot. Yeah. Jump and shoot man was back. Yeah. And it was awesome. It was balls fucking hard. But it was back to classics and it was really good. Um, and then, of course, as usual, the speedrunning community went nuts with that one. They so, were, so 10 the same? 10 was also 8 bit graphics. Yeah, of course. It was yeah. the, the, the jump and shoot, no charge shot. Um, excellent story. It basically, 9 had a bunch of Dr. Light's robots go crazy, but they were scheduled to be destroyed, and then they went berserk, and then it turned out that they were actually convinced to do so by Wily, who said that he could extend their life if they worked for him, and he bamboozled them, and again, he's a bad guy. Ten, a bunch of robots came down with the ro robo-influenza, roboenza virus. So a bunch of robots started getting sick and then started acting up, and Dr. Wily was pretending to be a nice guy and said he could create a cure if Mega Man were to help him get back the parts he needed for the machine to do so. But then Wily created the virus. He was going to hold the world hostage and only give out the cure if the whole world was going to pound out. Blah, 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 blah. But then he ended up getting sick. Yeah. Himself. Yeah. And so he had to be taken to the hospital. And that's how that game ended. And then he disappeared, but he left the cure behind for everyone. Right. And he ran away. So Mega Man 10 finishes. So, so like, how did the community feel about 9 and 10? They were just happy. They were like, oh, this is good. We were very happy to have classic games again. There was a lot of people saying, well, can we get another X game? Can we get another Legends game? Yeah. Which Legends we've been asking for, for God knows. So this is where long. we go back into Legends. And this is where we go back into, they've announced Mega Man Universe and Mega Man Legends. And there was going to be a fan community forum, and fans were going to vote on different art choices, be really involved in the game-making process from the ground up. Now, around this time, Inafune was really butting heads with Capcom. And they he didn't keep it behind the scenes. They made it very public. He really spoke about it publicly and said that he wanted to get away from these producer roles and be more involved in game development again. And he wasn't getting any leeway with that. And was basically threatening Capcom, saying, "I'm gonna leave, and if I if I leave, Mega Man's gonna die." Let me tell you something. I have a lot of friends in Japan that work at a lot of video game companies in Japan, and what I've heard, and I'm not naming names or saying anything, that Keiji Nafune <sighs> is the biggest fucking asshole in Japan. Well, that's now, what I've heard from like now, big video game developers, huge people. Well, now let's and this is let's let's. Let's work this through. Yeah, but that's that's the rumors that I even okay. I kind of knew about. He was a golden boy of Capcom. Yes. He was untouchable, and everyone lauded him for the excellent games. I mean, from from Onimusha to Dead Rising to the Mega Man series. I mean, he was he was the lead developer on a bunch of these games, or, or like sort of in charge of the production group that put these together. Right mm. now, he's threatening to leave if they don't give him a small studio of his own to run without them bothering him, without them getting involved. Yeah, he, he wants to be able to run this himself. They said no, and he left. He started now, becoming a bit of a prima donna kind of thing. Started like, you know what I mean? Well, you know what I mean. Just like yes, but 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 at the time, again, from the fan perspective, at from, the time, yeah, from the fan perspective, from the fan perspective, yeah. he's a golden boy who can do no wrong, who's making all these incredible games, and is telling us Capcom is being unreasonable. So we're gonna believe him because that's what he's saying, and and he leaves, and basically utters the threat that any Mega Man game that Capcom releases after that is not going to be loved by the fans. It is going to be crap because he wasn't involved with it. Now, what happens? Capcom goes, okay, well, that's it. We're shuttering Mega Man Legends 3, which we waited how long for? And then they just, huh, we're, we're closing it down. Now, now, they cited yeah. not enough interest from the fans for this. That's what they said. Was Keiji Nifune like completely in charge of Mega Man Legends yes. 3? He was so, running the so, project. So he was running the project. Out. So the, he leaves, the project probably just falls apart. Well, he, you know, it, was, it was up there. in the air. He left a team groomed up and ready to finish it. He also said, even though he was leaving, he was willing to finish that project for them. But they said, nope, you're done. Get out. This project is finished. Over. Then they canceled Mega Man Universe as well. Anything with the Mega Man name on it got canceled because. All the fans are now saying, well, if Ian Fune is gone, then Capcom, Mega Man's dead. Anyway, is what 
Capcom is believing. Right. So that gets shuttered. It gets mothballed. It's over. Legends 3 is gone. And fan groups all over, like the biggest being 100,000 Strong to Bring Back Legends 3 started. I was with them from the from the start. Um, I and, and they 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 rallied. They petitioned. They they you know had tables at all sorts of gaming conventions. They got signatures. They really kept trying to tell Capcom like, no, we 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 still want this. Yeah. And what was frustrating was uh, to everyone's understanding, the prototype version of the game was done not only in Japanese but also that never leaked. Translated it, to it, England. It, 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 nope. No. It never leaked. One one journalist got to play it. And he's been interviewed by 100,000 Strong a few times. He got to play it, and that was it. And it was never seen again. And as far as we know, it's still finished and ready to go anytime they want, but packed away somewhere in Capcom HQ. So wild. But they canceled everything. That was it. Inafune goes quiet for a little bit. And then he comes up <laughs> at PAX with this Kickstarter for something called Mighty Number, Number nine. 9. Yes. And... The video is this beautiful tear-jerking homage to the Mega Man games and oh, all these I know. references and saying, I want Mega Man to be what it should have been and I want to bring glory back to the franchise. I want to give you gamers exactly what you want because I'm the guy who always fought for you. And he, he runs this Kickstarter campaign and he blows every stretch goal out of the water. I mean, yeah. they, he wanted $80,000 to make the game. He ended up with over three million. Okay, blows everything out of the water, and production starts on Mighty Number no. Nine, and the Mega Man fan oh, community all is rallied, buzzing. We all rallied yes, behind it. This we is, did, and this was an exciting time. It was huge. Yeah, no. it's like yes, we're, we're going to back you. We want to back you. Yes, we want you to make this amazing Mega Man game. And this was supposed to be the fans and KG's big old. Fuck you to Capcom. That's what this was supposed to be. It was supposed to be all us going... He, I know, like, he painted them as some bad guys and because yeah. they canceled everything. They were looking kind of not so, so so good. It was a weird time. At this point, it looks like Mega Man is just gone. He's RIP. It's over. You know, last rites. He's been buried. It's done on so many web comics and meme pictures that were hilarious and heartbreaking at the same time. Yeah. Like the, the, the clubhouse full of all the Mega Man guys that's on fire while Capcom walks away. A guy with a Capcom for a face walks away. All that stuff. Um, but we're all excited. We're getting Mighty Number no. 9. It's going to be great. But from the get-go, there were problems. There was scandal. The community manager that was hired was... Uh, in some controversy. There were several controversies. There were people that were calling her a social justice warrior. And, and this was when the SJWs and Gamergate and all that fight. And I'm not even getting into that. Yeah, we're not but getting into that. She was booting people because... People were supposed to be involved with this game the way that they were supposed to be involved with Legends 3. There was a forum. You could vote for different art styles, right. for different character designs, for different things to be included, yada yada, and share your thoughts on it. But the community manager that was running those forums was this lady who was basically, I'm not going to name names, I'm not going to drag yeah, it all yeah, up, yeah. but so a bunch of people got mad at that because basically if they spoke out against what she believed was right, she banned people. People who have paid their money to this Kickstarter to be a part of these forums and have their voice heard were getting kicked out because she didn't agree with what they said. That's not good. What, okay? were, what were they saying? Well, I don't know well, anything about this. She wanted like, I don't the know main the character was going to be Beck, and then the girl was going to be Call. She kept saying she wanted Beck to be turned into a female lead, and yeah. that she wanted there to be more female representation in the game. And all this, this again, this is all the heresy and the rumors that float around. But basically, the director should call him up with that, not this, not, not her. This. Kitchen of Fune should say but what that is. This is where it starts. So this is the beginning of the end. Okay. Yes. This so then there's, there's a little shaky. So I mean, the community forums are already in a shambles. There's a lot of negative press starting to swirl about wow. Mighty Number no. Nine. We move forward. We're getting close to the promised release date, and there are rumors that it's going to be delayed. But of course, Comcept, the new company that Inafune is running, and Inafune, no, 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 nothing's delayed. Everything's on time. No, no, no. They're all rumors. It's bullshit. It's not going to happen. Release day shows up and they go, okay, yeah, well, it's kind of delayed. Sorry. <laughs> it's going to be another... Which is okay. Which is fine. If they had said so at the get-go. Because everyone knows that a Kickstarter product and it happens. Okay, we weren't quite able to get it done in time, but if you Blood come out staying, and say... Blood Shamu, they're always... But, they've but, been in development for years but they now. come out front and say, you know what, because we've run into these issues and because we want this to be as good as it can be... It's going to take more time. We're going to need to do a little more stuff. But no, 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 no. Deny, 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 deny until you caught red-handed and there's no way out of it. Okay, yeah, it's going to be delayed. Now, not only that, but the original 2D art style that we were pitched on the Kickstarter turned into 3D rendered characters. Um, 
the play style is suddenly focusing a heck of a lot on speedrun style. Uh, and, and like, there's just so many changes that are happening that are not what we were promised. And then there's the first delay. And then there was a second delay, which again, they denied up to the last minute. And then there was a third delay, which they denied up to the last minute. And then there was a launch trailer that said something about leaving. Uh, it, well, it's going to leave you crying like an anime fan on prom night. That was weird. Even even I watched it, I was like... like I did, do you know what it was? People were already upset at that point. I, I'm, I'm kind of yeah. on the side watching all this. People were... But this really ignited people. People were already upset, and they were like, what the Basically, fuck? you're making fun of the fan base that is trying to still support you through all of the bullshit you've put them through. You're basically making fun of them and treating them like shit. It's weird. Could it's you imagine if we make a game and we start doing things? Could you like, like having the trailers like that? Like, where's the thought process? Like, if we if we were to sit here in front of this camera and in to say, yeah, and all those sorry ass weeb losers who <laughs> masturbate to anime, what a bunch of idiots they are. We hey, hate them. That's me. Yeah, I know that's me too. <laughs> but but right yeah. right. So yeah, that's yeah. basically what happened here. Yeah. And 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 so I mean. <sighs> How are you feeling at this point? Were you just like, like, because the, the crowd is at feeling that point, mad. Because I was, an angry mob. Okay. Are you in the middle of the angry mob? I was, I was not. I was trying to stay on the fringe, but I was starting to get pissed. Yeah. And then the other problem was with that first trailer that was released was the graphics. I mean, I'm sorry. I've seen three million dollar games. Oh. As you, so the upset was the amount of money to the, the end result. Oh yeah, the fact that it was delayed as many times as it was and then how it looked, how the advertising was handled. I mean, all of this was just a fiasco. And the final product is, is it fun? Yeah. So wait a second, so the original thing, he could have made the game for $80,000? That's what he said. That's what he said. That's what he said he could do. But he ended up with three million, and he had all these stretch goals and it's added really these things. Really weird. But I'm, I'm, so there's been some you know, moment, so many amazing games that have been created over the years for a lot less money. Well, exactly. I mean, let's look at. I mean, let's look at Cave Story. Yeah. That was, I'm pretty sure, way less than three million, and it's yeah. a brilliant side-scrolling action game with excellent pixel graphics that plays wonderfully. The controls are great. The story's fantastic. It's a really well-developed game. Designed well from the ground up. Mighty Number no. Nine came out, and to be honest, by the time it came out, there was kind of a. Yeah, I know. And I remember it. only half of the physical backer goods that were so, promised so, were shipped. So, so, so let's talk about this. We, you've never had a chance to talk about this, and this okay. is what I want to hear. Okay. What did you order? What did you get? And what didn't you get? Like that's important. So, I put down the 250 US dollars, which with extra shipping because I live in Canada, which is also far away, came to 280. And I was supposed to get a Japanese Famicom style retro box for Mighty Number no. 9 with instruction manual. A North American NES style retro box with manual for Mighty Number no. 9. I was supposed to get a Japanese and North American design t shirt, which was to have different designs on them. Two shirts with, or with one shirt? Two shirts. Two, two shirts. different ones. Oh, one for North American. So design, two boxes, two shirts, okay. A plush of one of the characters out of the game, an art book and strategy guide. Hand signed by Inafune, and a poster and a with poster. Mighty Number no. Nine artwork on it. So it seems reasonable. Around the time the game was supposed to ship, I received a box that had two T-shirts and a plush in it. So, the, the, let's, now, so sorry. Let's okay. Two hundred eighty dollars. All this stuff. So they send this to you. Where's the rest of it? What the fuck is this? That's a very good question, and many of us asked that for several years. While Fangamer, who was creating the stuff, said, we haven't been sent the assets yet. Yeah, I don't think it was Fangamer. And, it... and Concept, who's saying, oh, well, nothing. They didn't say anything. They didn't say anything. They didn't comment. Not a word, not even a popcorn fart. Nothing out of them. Wow. And everyone's like, where's the stuff? Where's the stuff? Where's the stuff? Where's the stuff? Silence, crickets, nothing for years. So we had a plushie, a couple t-shirts. Some of the people got their poster. I never got my fucking poster. And so you did it. these boxes. So the two boxes and the hardcover, art book and strategy guide, strategy guide. signed by Inafune. Yep. In the wind. The game has come out. Now, they've still never released the DS or PSP version of the game they promised. So people who had bought that specifically wanting it for the handheld still don't have it. The Wii version was a broken mess when it first came out and is still nigh unplayable. Um, like it was, just, it was just a complete fiasco, and the game looks like a Dreamcast game, which is okay. But I, th do you know, what I think it is, Rob. I think it's not only the visual style. I think it's all yeah. the bullshit 
it just just mm. just compounded in on this. Well, if you go point. back to their Kickstarter page and you look at the first drawing that they put up for what the game was supposed to look like, it was this beautiful hand-drawn anime style, shaded beautifully piece of artwork. And then if you take a screenshot of what the game actually looks like, it it's a hot corny turd on the sidewalk. You know what? They got it's, too greedy. He wanted too much. He should have just done it for one platform and, and done now, it well. This is where conjecture takes over. And I, this is not official. This is not in any way proven. But this is my opinion. My war big red warning should be flashing across the screen right now. Warning, this is an opinion only. And this is my opinion. It does not reflect the opinions of Happy Console Gamer or any of its legal partners or any of the <laughs> sponsors around the I, I, I like okay. your opinions. This is this, is, this is my opinion. Yeah, what is around it? Around the same time that Mighty Number no. 9 was being uh, created by Concept, they were working on a fun little game called ReCore, which was not fan-supported, which was not fan-backed, and that was supposed Microsoft. to be coming the Xbox One for Microsoft. Yeah. That was a highly polished, 3D-rendered, science fiction action platforming game in 3D, that sure as hell looks a lot like a $3 million game. Done. Which came out with an art book and a soundtrack that released on time. Mm. Mm. But that's just something for you to think about. I'll leave that up in the air. Oh, a never so, mind Red Ash. I'm not even going there. We won't even go. I'm like, not, you know what? That's a story this for another like, day. Like, it's like this, this, what this is talk is about is a uh, you know the beginnings of Mega Man, so, the ups, and then this is one so of the downs. This is and the, we're gonna this go up is soon. The plummet. So what's happened is now the Mega Man fans are left with Capcom snubbing us. Mega Man's fifth, uh, 20th anniversary came and went with, or 25th anniversary, sorry, mm. came and went with no fanfare, nothing. Capcom has basically, they turned their backs on the fan base. Yeah, they just keep releasing and like collections they, yeah, for every one, one to machine. six got released. So, and, and just to keep up because I'm stupid enough that I bought them. Uh, one to six, I have the original NES cartridges. I have the PS1 re-releases that were Japan only. I've got Mega Man one to six on my DS. I've got it on my 3DS. I've got it on my Wii. I've got them on my Wii U. I, you know, and then they re-released the, uh, the Legacy Collection that was 1-6 to six on the Xbox One the PS4. I've got those. I've got the Anniversary Collections that were on the Xbox, the PS2, and the GameCube. I have 1-6 to six in more formats than any human being ever fucking should. But, they kept releasing 1-6. to six. And so they did a Legacy Collection 1-6. to six, And it was like, woo! Thanks again. Yeah. The same so, game. so, yeah, so therefore, they're just giving that. Uh, there's no more and uh, merchandise, Mega Man games. Merchandise, 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 mugs, cups, t shirts, keychains, anything they can throw Mega Man on to make a buck. They're doing that. And the fan base is starting to feel a bit like a milked cash cow. So, yeah. And then you've got Inafune over here, who's supposed to be the golden child in the promised land and the bringer of the greatness, and he drops a hot corny turd into your console and walks away with a smile on his face, counting his fucking money. You did. Pretty much, and even I. Okay, you know, warning, and, warning. Yeah. I, I feel that he walked away with money. I feel that. I feel. Well, I feel that that money went into into uh, Recore. Is that what you think, eh? I'm sorry. The Recore was developed at the same time, and it came out looking fucking amazing and well polished. Where's and Red Ash now? Red Ash. And Red was Ash a, is now, another. Th Red Ash was another Kickstarter he did that was supposed to be the successor to Mega Man Legends, and then all of a sudden, well, it was going to be uh, episodic though, so he'd release little episodes, and so the first episode was going to be covered by the Kickstarter. Then he wanted to make an anime, and he did another Kickstarter. He's doing all these Kickstarters. He still hasn't delivered on the first one. Yet. You know what? what he's doing. He's he's doing a hundred things, but he's not doing one thing right, and that is the problem. That I think that is the core problem why people are upset. And you know what? Even if one of the follow-up Kickstarters had shit the bed, that wouldn't have been as bad if he'd done the first one right. But he fucked us. He, I'm sorry, he fucked us. And, and he it screwed was it was a disaster. It was a disaster. Was a complete, Nobody can say, like for you, still, to this day, you don't have the art book. No, no, no. I, eventually, um, a, maybe a year ago? I'm not sure of the timing. They eventually, out of nowhere, an uh, email started showing up in backers' inboxes. Uh, this is Fan Gamer. We need you to send us or reconfirm your address so that we can send you the last of the goods. So finally I did get my NES and my Famicom boxes with the wow. manuals. And then the manual for the, Fam for the NES box was too big and they had to reship another one. Because they <laughs> fucked up on that. Okay, um, just... but I mean, and, and the art book, and it finally showed but up. How many? And you know what? This is like two years late, right? No, more than that. Is it more than more, that? More wow. than two years yeah. late. But and and basically, by the time that showed up, the package showed up. I opened it up. I made sure everything was in there, and I put it on the shelf, and that's it. I like I didn't even bother folding the boxes up and putting them on the shelf with my Mega Man. You know what? The, the Mighty Number no. 9 shit is never touching my Mega Man shelf. It's never going near it. It'll never go near it. I'm never gonna have it near it. And you know, there was a time. 
when that Kickstarter began, where we were going to do an episode and you getting a yep. tattoo. Yep. Of Beth. I was going to, and the art team, the guys, I was in contact with the guys that were running Mighty Number no. 9 at Concept, the North American reps, and they were, I was talking to them about getting one of their artists to do up art for me for a tattoo of Beck, and I was going to do an episode of getting that tattoo, and thank God it never happened. Oh, thank God it never Holy happened. Holy shit. That, that would have been, been a nightmare disaster. for you. So now, and that brings us to what happened of late. Yes. Okay. Because we've done this. We. Oh shit. Yeah. Mega Man's 30th anniversary. December. A couple months ago by the filming of this episode. And we're all expecting a Mega Man X collection. Yeah, again. Nobody had high expectations walking into this we at all, all. We all went into this with our head hung low, going, here we go. Uh, another live stream. Uh, they're going to announce more rehashes of games we all have a million copies of. <laughs> and so it starts. And uh, I mean, the, the, the pre show was fun. Uh, we had uh, three well known um, Mega Man fan uh, content creators. There was Mega Ran, there was Mega Phil, and there was uh, a speed running guy. I can't remember his name right now, and I'm so mm. sorry about that. I'm such a jerk. Um, and they did a little sort of like a game show contest pre show for the stream. Yeah, I kind of saw a little. I missed a question. Yeah, Mega Ran did another stellar performance. I love his stuff. He's freaking great. And yeah. his performance was fantastic. And then the live stream started. And so they brought on one of the original staff members that worked on Mega Man in the before times, like from the very beginning, from the first one. And he was talking about, you know, well, a lot of people know about Mega Man and its history, so we want to say that we're bringing out the X Collection, Legacy Collection for all platforms. All of the Mega Man X games will be released on all platforms in HD. Okay. And he said, so, and, and, and now people are curious, what's the future of Mega Man? And you're like, there's a and future like, of Mega Man? Uh, no. And I said, <laughs> we all know what it is. Merchandising, merchandising, merchandising. That's all we're going to get. And so he says, but before we do that, I want to I've made a little video showing you the past of Mega Man so that we can all appreciate where he came from. Well, okay, well, is neat. Now, I'm driving a work van. I am driving a work van. This is how much of a freaking idiot Mega Man fan I am. I'm driving my work van, and I've got my phone propped up in the cup holder over here with the stream on, so I'm sort of glancing over every once in a while I'm driving. And the video's on, and I'm kind of glancing over, and it's like really slow, stuck in rush hour. And I'm glancing over, and Mega Man, and he's running across, and there's the years, and showing the hallmark years for various games that came out in the release dates, and it goes through all of the classic series, the X, and the, the, um, the Game Boy Advance ones, the Battle Network, it goes through the ZX, the Mega Man Zero games, all this great stuff, and it goes through and up, and then Mega Man 10, and it, it, it does that one, and then there's this big gap, and there's just, the years are ticking by, and there's nothing going on, and there's nothing going on, I'm going, thanks for rubbing my face in it. That's fan fucking good. I knew that, I was watching it too, and, then and I'm like, they're leading went, to something. And then it went up, and it went to 2016. And Mega Man runs into the room, and there's Dr. Wily. And then there's the big old Dr. Wily, and he's bowing at his feet, and he's like, dee -dee 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 -dee. And then Dr. Wily gets up and does the eyebrow wiggle thing, and then he backs up against the wall, and it turns around, and he's gone. And there's one of those, and people who know the game know those little boss teleporters that you can step into, and it goes, Bleep, and it takes you into the boss rooms and the Wily levels. So there's one of those, and Mega Man steps into it, and he goes, Bleep, and then he appears in this room, and this dead silence, and there's the 8 bit sprite of Mega Man, and there's a little circle that says 30th, and it says, 2018 and there's a question mark and he walks over and picks it up and the screen changes to this beautiful rendered classic Mega Man going whoosh with his animation showing up and shooting his buster and these new bad guys like the Sniper Joes rolling around in these little unicycle wheels and there's just music and my brain is starting to explode and then it, and it was only like less than a minute long I think Mega kind of Man 11, coming out late 2018. And I, my head exploded. I had to pull over my van. And I pulled my van over to stop. my sitting there going, there's a, there's a Mega Man 11 coming out. They're, they're bringing him back. And all of the staff involved are all people who've worked on previous Mega Man games, except Inafune. And I just kind of, and got excited. And then this guy phones me. Oh yeah, and I said, hey, I said, I I'm gonna phone you. Uh, I said, let's, let's talk about it. And that's why I got your reaction and to it. So we got my reaction yeah. on here, and I yeah. was just, oh! and I'm still, I watched that at least once a day. I watched yeah. that trailer. Yeah. Because 
Oh, and and then listening to and going through that stream and listening to the producers and the art designers. And there's a behind this behind the scenes stuff of what other more coming. It. It's and absolutely interesting. So so I mean the the, the original producer uh, and creator of the character is involved in this. Yeah. Because Inafune didn't create Mega Man. He was brought in in the first game to do some art, but he didn't create it. The guy who created Mega Man is back at the helm, and he's talking about things like in that trailer. You'll notice that when his arm changes uh, for the Buster for the weapon, it changes its appearance a bit, and his helmet changes too. And he says in those interviews he wanted to do that in the very first Mega Man on the NES. Which couldn't do it back then. Technology couldn't do it, and he it wasn't able to be introduced since. But now he can. Yeah. And so, but I mean, from the they've done a slight re a slight redesign on Mega Man. They've. Um, up the graphic quality, but in a way that it's rendered, but it looks cell shaded. Yeah, beautifully so. Like I just every time I watch it, I've, I've watched it on my big screen TV in 1080p on YouTube, and I just I tears just how beautiful it looks. Looks so good, and there's still a whole year to wait before it comes out. So there's so much more work they can do on well, it. Yeah, can you believe Look. it? Can you believe it that Keiji Nafune? I, it's almost extraordinary. He, I'm leaving. Mega Man will never be the same, and we never thought it would be. And Mega Man's back, and it's good. And he's the one who's out now. Whoa! Now, it's so weird. And once again, we're gonna go into opinion and conjecture. Are you ready? Opinion and conjecture time. My opinion and conjecture. Once again, my opinions do not reflect the opinions of Happy Console Gamer or any of us conglomerates, subscribers, or any backers or anyone else involved. With it. Oh, so backers. my opinion. <laughs> whatever you know what I mean. Uh, I'm just doing a little legal disclaimer just to make oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. Um, Inafune leaves Capcom amidst this maelstrom of he's great, he's the reason Mega Man was great. Capcom freaked out about this, goes, well, we can't touch the character now because we're going to be screwed no matter what we do because yeah, all the fans are smart. on yeah. his side. Which, yeah, that's smart. Yeah, actually. it's better just to be quiet and uh, all I can see. Like, yeah. with, with the perspective of age and time comes some wisdom. Mm. They went, mm-mm, because... -mm, you know the fans are all saying the same thing, man. If 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 it does come out, it's gonna they're gonna be mad, and if it doesn't come out, they're gonna be mad. So you know what? Let's go. It doesn't come out, and and just in case. And to be honest, better chance of preserving the name of the series by doing that than by bringing out a game that people think is subpar and really killing it, right? So they mothball it and they sit back and watch what he does, and he does his Kickstarter, and they even they Capcom even contributed to the Kickstarter. I remember that. They did. They contributed a bit to the Kickstarter at the beginning. Wow. So Just to show goodwill. That's just actually, show goodwill. That, that's actually pretty amazing right? on their part. So, and it blows up in his face. And they sit back and watch this and go, okay. And they see how the fans start to turn and, and, and go, well, maybe this guy wasn't who we thought he was. And Capcom goes, okay, now that that's out there, now we can take a chance and see if the fans will back a game made in that franchise without him. Now that he's shown his hand and kind of lost favor. And that's what I feel has happened now, is that they waited, they wanted to see what would happen with him, wanted to see how fans would react to that, and then decide what to do with the series and the franchise, which is where we get to now. Mega Man 11 is gonna be coming out. They've announced it's gonna be physical editions on all platforms. It, you know, they're, they're going to the nines. They're re-releasing the Legacy Collection 1 and 2 on Nintendo Switch with, and this is the one that slipped under a lot of people's radar, with Amiibo support. Oh, okay. Which means they're gonna start releasing Mega Man Amiibos. Which means that I'm gonna be broken. Oh, my wife's gonna God. leave me. Oh God! More goddamn amiibos. That's M all but, we need. But, but I'm gonna be broken. My wife's gonna leave me. Right. <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. No, you'll have like, Mega Man, so you'll be okay. But there's Mega Man amiibos. <laughs> but so, but the, this is the potential for them to take back the franchise. Which means, because there's been a lot of, and I've seen it, and I understand, there's been a lot of people who are Legends fans only and not really into the Classic NX series, complaining that well, yeah, well, you got what you wanted, but we didn't get what we wanted, guys. You don't understand. Like it was in the beginning, so it is now. The classic series is going to lead the way. The classic series game that comes out does well, and is well received, and is an excellent game. Yeah. That that means that the Mega Man franchise is viable, which means that then they can look at X and Legends and well, do no, more with what, those. And what it means is that to win the fans back. Yes. That's what Capcom is trying to do yes. here, which is a that's a good thing. It is, and it's it, a good thing. And it can lead only to better things. Yes, exactly. So yeah. I, I see this as like, guys, get me off the moon. You have been the most patient, passionate, driven group of fans I have ever seen. And this is your time. This is the time. 
Yeah. Stick to your guns as I know you have, but if you keep at it now, amidst this chance at rebirth for the Mega Man franchise, this is when you have a chance of getting Legends we, 3. We, like honestly, me and Rob, nobody wants Mega Man Legends 3 more than me and Rob do. Like, I love mm. Mega Man Legends, and could you imagine, I would love a remastered version of the first game! Oh, oh! In high def, oh. that would be amazing. High def, redo the, the yeah. graphics, better polygons, Capcom, cell shading. Capcom, Capcom, Capcom. 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 Like, I, I would, you know, yeah. I would, I would love it. I would love it. I, would, I mean, come on. This is my morning coffee mug, people. Yeah. This is my morning coffee mug. I, it's, I, yeah. I, and I, I love that Capcom is giving it to us. There's no Kickstarters. This is here's the game. Yes. You either want it or you don't. It's up to you. It's and, up to us. You and know? you know what's interesting? If you look at the art style that they've used in that trailer, and you look at the first screen image they used for the Mighty Number no. Nine Kickstarter, looks a lot like it. Mm. It's the same kind of soft palette, slightly airbrushed anime cell shaded. Look. Well, yeah, for sure. That's so stylistic. It, yeah. That delivering what was promised and not given. Interestingly, right. so right. I mean, from the ground up, the game looks gorgeous. The character design looks fantastic. There's uh, old enemies and new. The old pickaxe pickaxe guy from Mega Man One in Guts Man Stage. Yeah, he's back. Right. I, yeah. He was in the trailer, and he's driving that backhoe yeah. that's swinging the shovel around and stuff. Like it just, it all looks so amazing. And I'm so, for the first time, in over a decade, I'm excited about Mega Man again. And even, that even, feels even good a, to say. I, I like the the positivity yes. surrounding all of this again. It's like, you know, the, we felt that with Mighty Number no. Nine. Then all went blah, and we all felt yeah. we felt bad afterwards. It, like it just drained it, our energy. It was it was a heartbreak, like no other. It was a heartbreak. It really was. And it's nice to get that energy up again. And that's what we that's what we want. We got into this series. You got into the Mega Man series for fun because you liked it. It was yeah. enjoyable. So did I. I enjoyed it not as much as you, but I, I still yeah. could appreciate the series. Yeah. And then to see it kind of go up and then weird and up. It's been a bit of a roller coaster ride the last few years. It's nice to be getting off at this point. Yeah, so here we are now. We're, we're, we're on the precipice of a new dawn for Mega Man. We're, I'm really, I am so excited for the future. I'm excited. I know a lot of people are being cautiously optimistic. I don't blame you. And that's it. okay. I think that's I mean, okay you know, too, yeah. When, when, totally when you've opened a door and been slapped in the face more than a few times, <laughs> you're not going to stand there with your hand on the door and I'm going, I think it's going to be great today. You know, yeah. you're going to be waiting for that <laughs> hand to come back. But, yeah. but, but still have a little optimism think that this time when you open that door you're gonna get a great big box of chocolates instead of a slap in the face <laughs> you know so it's 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 a wonderful thing Mega Man is is on his way back as far as I could tell I'm gonna keep that positive opinion myself Until you but play it has it. been a long freaking ride absolutely and Holy when the game hell. comes out it's gonna be late uh, 2018 we're gonna sit for the weekend we're mm -hmm. gonna annihilate the game and review it because I, we have to I'm gonna be game. all over that yeah. thing like a hobo on a ham sandwich <laughs> like I am gonna be, I'm gonna probably book time off work. Uh, it's, it's I'm going to talk to my employers ahead of time when they announce the release date. I'm gonna be like, okay, so like a day before, uh, uh, before the release date and after the release date, I need this much time off. Yeah. Because I'm in Mega Man land, baby. It's quite uh -huh. literally, it's quite literally, uh, quite literally another man, uh, you know, another Mega Man, like like real, like not not like um, you know, another 8-bit game, a complete. You know, going ground forward, up, going ground forward. forward game. Like, but finally at that point, again, yes. it took a long time. Yes, I man. mean, nine and ten were great and they were fantastic, but they were in a lot of ways kind of homages a, to the past. They were an homage to the past. They were a trip backwards. This is the next step into the next generation of Mega Man, and I cannot wait to take it. Absolutely. So, guys, we just want to sit and talk about Mega Man. I want Rob to come in here and gush because we haven't had yes. a chance to really gush. And it's good to end on a, on a positive note than to yes. stay in the Mighty Number no. Nine stuff, you know. So, anyways, guys, until next time.